You've done 90 day program, now what? Do you feel anxious and you're not understanding why? I quit doing drugs, I'm abstinence. I went to a 90 day program, but I still feel stressed out, overwhelmed and anxious. You're going through post acute withdrawal. And understanding this is gonna be the first part, it's a very important part of your recovery that you will succeed and prevent relapse. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go over seven things. We're gonna talk about education and retraining the mind, self-protective behavior. Then we're gonna talk a little bit about nutrition, a little bit about exercise, relaxation and how important and that is for us stressed out tense addicts and then spirituality and then balanced living which are all very very important areas of your life to manage post-acute withdrawal post-acute withdrawal can lead a lot of people back into doing drugs because they don't understand what their body's going through. Why am I so anxious? Why am I overreacting? Why can't I remember anything? And I'm having a hard time doing the simplest tasks. Some days I'm good. Some days I'm bad. Number one, education and retraining. Learning about addictive disease, recovery, and post-acute withdrawal symptoms help relieve anxiety, guilt, confusion that tends to create the stress intensifying PA symptoms. So as a recovering person, you need information in order to realize that the symptoms are normal. Oh, that makes me feel a little bit better. Oh, this bout of depression and doubt. What is this? You know, where did this come from? This is normal. It's okay. Let's get through it. Let's learn how to manage it. Retraining involves practicing certain skills in a safe environment as you build confidence. It includes learning to take things step by step and handle one thing at a time. If you got five things to do today, don't try to do them all at once. Don't try to get one done and stress about the other four while you're doing the one thing. Just get one done at a time. Do not get overwhelmed. What is the biggest lie we tell ourselves? I'm going to remember that. Yeah, <laughs> never do. Write down what you want to remember. Get into the habit of writing things. Ask questions when you need to have something clarified. I'm guilty of this. Somebody says something to you and you just pretend like you know what they're talking about. Did you see that? And you're like, uh-huh. I do it at work all the uh -huh. time. And really you didn't. There's something inside of us that doesn't want to feel dumb. There's, you know, it's a little bit of ego and pride. We don't want to go, no, tell me about that. So ask questions. So number two, self-protective barriers. This one's a tough one. When all is said and done, you are responsible for protecting yourself from anything that threatens your sobriety or anything that triggers post-acute withdrawal symptoms. Letting joy suckers into your life, I draw a healthy boundary. If you act like that, I'm going to stay over here. Anybody or anything in your life life that's going to threaten your sobriety or possibly trigger a post-acute withdrawal symptom, get rid of it. I love what Jake said the other day. He goes, this next year, I'm going to ghost and grind. Like ghost and grind is I'm ghosting everybody that I don't need to have in my life at this moment. And, and he's not doing it to be a jerk. He's doing it for himself and he's going to grind, right? He's going to work hard. He's going to get some things. He's going to take care of business and, and grow mentally, physically in his relationships with his sons. So that's what we need to do at that point. A good self-protective behavior is to ghost and grind. Identify stress triggers. Those situations that might bring about an overreaction from you. What situations stress you out and cause you to overreact? Avoid those. Change your reaction or learn to interrupt them before they get out of control. You start to feel that coming up in you. Turn left. Get away from it. Number three we're going to talk about is nutrition. Abstinence alone is not sufficient to rebuild damaged body tissue and maintain good health. New eating habits must be established and practiced regularly and permanently. Your diet, your daily diet should contain a balance of vegetables, fruit, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and milk products. Figure out how many calories you need to eat each day. Like right now, don't change anything in your life. Tomorrow, wake up, Grab a pen and paper. Every time you consume something in your body, write down how much and what it is. If you have a cup of coffee, write it down. Yeah. If you have donuts, write it down. Don't change anything. Just write it down and then kind of go back and research the calorie content and the nutrition factor to what you're eating. See the fuel that you're putting in your body. Our mind is weak and our body is willing. The body says, I'm hungry for this. And the mind's like, okay. 
a- analyze what you got going on. Avoid sugar and caffeine. Sorry, Teeter. Coffee's life. <laughs> <laughs> the word hangry. We've all been there. Hangry produces stress. That's when you start making bad decisions that could lead backwards. Where This is relapse prevention. Chip says, I eat when I'm bored, stressed, alone, and never because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot of people I know. Number four, exercise. Exercise is your body releasing chemicals in your brain that make you feel good to relieve pain, anxiety, and tension. You go work out, you get chemical release. Have you heard of the runner's high before? When we go on hikes, we feel great on the way back. Every night at six o'clock when we go and work out on the way home, it's ah. You can jog, you can swim, you can jump rope, bicycle, all that kind of stuff. But choose a form of exercise that is fun for you so that you will stick with it. And it doesn't have to be crazy. We're just talking about small adjustments in your life. Number five, relaxation. There are things you can do to readily reduce or escape the stress you feel when you are unable to change a situation or better cope with the stress of everyday living. Laughing, playing, listening to music, storytelling, fantasizing, reading, and a massage are some methods of natural Natural stress reduction. Learn to relax. Playing is a necessary form of relaxation that is often neglected. We've been talking about that a lot lately. We got to be kids again. Learn to play. We've all forgotten what it is like to go outside and just play. And that's going to help us relax. And on top of that, you get exercise. We all need time for having fun, laughing, and being childlike and free. Number six, spirituality. Spirituality is an active relationship with a higher power greater than yourself that gives your life meaning and purpose. If you're working a 12-step program, it's a spiritual program, right? Step two, came to believe that a power greater than me can restore me to sanity. A belief in a higher power takes you out of the center of the universe and offers peace of mind and serenity by an awareness that there is a power that is not restricted by your weakness or limitation. A huge thing on the spirituality thing, it is important to examine your values values. Look within yourself to determine whether your life is in harmony with those values. That little value system that you had in your early life, compare your life to it now. Go back to it. And number seven, last but not least, is balanced living. Balanced living means there is biopsychosocial harmony. We talked about that, right? Bio, that's your body. Psycho, your mind. Relationships is your social. Harmony between all three. Harmony, harmony, harmony. It means you're healthy physically. It means you're healthy psychologically and you have healthy relationships. It means you're spiritually whole. It means you're no longer focused on one aspect of your life. It means that you are living responsibly, giving yourself time for your job family and friends, as well as time for your own growth and recovery. Balanced living needs a strong social network. I know a bunch of you in this chat and I've gotten to become friends with you. We are building a strong social network online. We should do that as well locally in our towns and with our family. A healthy network provides a sense of belonging. It includes relationships where you feel you are a valuable part. Immediate family members, friends, relative co-workers, counselors, employers, self-help group members, and sponsors. Strong social social network. Educate and retrain daily. And then you put up self-protective barriers. Your nutrition, what does it look like? And then exercise. Add that to your life daily and then learn to relax. Spirituality, get on your knees and pray. And then balance living. Learn how to balance it all out. Don't take too much at a time. Till next Sunday, God, God grant, grant me the serenity, serenity to, to accept, accept the things, things I cannot, cannot change, change, the courage to change, change the things I can. can. And And the the wisdom wisdom to know know the the difference. difference. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, we will be back going through our book, Staying Sober. Till then, do not put yourself in a high-risk situation. Stay strong, work your program, and remember, we We recover recover better better together. together.